Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Oh, ciao, 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 ciao. Good morning. I leave you the floor for the for your conversation and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Alessandro. I found that the also the previous interview, the talk very, very interesting. I'm very glad to invite uh, Juan Roldan. That, uh, hello, Juan. Ciao. Good morning. Good Ciao. morning. Ciao. Um, Juan Roldan uh, is a professor working in the American University of Sharjah in Emirates. Uh, he, um, he's a very interesting person because uh, his approach uh, in uh, education uh, in a country as uh, uh, Emirates is very stimulating. Uh, for many reasons related to the local conditions, but also on the fact that most of the time uh, in also interior design is uh, a sort of gender <laughs> graduation, you know, it's true? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah, both uh, as you were describing. My, m when I first landed here in the United Arab Emirates, um, I I was trying to understand uh, probably the local context, and there's a lot of questions that were intriguing me, and uh, so my curiosity was driven into my uh, first of all to my uh, main interest as a professional and how I was trained uh, because I studied architecture but mainly in the in the branch of uh, urban planning uh, but on the other extreme or on the other side of the spectrum my professional life I had to do with uh, interior design and uh, teaching within the interior design program here um, as a visiting uh, professor in, in Politecnico in Bovisa uh, with Luisa Colina and Luciano Crespi and uh, so at uh, that time for me was was really uh, difficult to try to merge these two uh, sides of the coin. Uh, but I mean, I think somehow in the last years I have tried uh, to find the similarities and the, and the things that are linked them. They are more than uh, what we can think at the beginning. So yeah, that's a little bit uh, the context of my academic profile a little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, the word uh, you selected uh, is interiority, and it's very, very interesting because uh, um, the way you want to talk is completely out of any stereotype related to the interiors uh, in, uh, in a country where usually people spend a lot of time inside buildings. Why you feel that interiority uh, during the lockdown uh, can uh, change? Angel can reinforce uh, his meaning, its meaning. I mean, it's. Uh, I started trying to understand, and this is part of, uh, of following up in my previous, let's say, statement about my research agenda. Um, in a place like the UAE, where we could have uh, that uh, fake or false presumption that the public space is not used. Um, I have been discovering gradually that it's, uh, it's, it's not what we think it is. Um, I started some, doing some research on public realm like six years ago, just by pure curiosity. And I started discovering that there was many, many, many uh, rituals or many actions that were happening in the public realm. Uh, that somehow we're extending a lot of the um, rituals that could be happening in a, within an interior space. Um, I'd, probably I have to give some context about the social uh, structure of the UAE. We have to think that uh, and around 85% an of the population, like us, we're migrant population, labor, more or less um, um, specialized. Uh, with a 15% of local Emirati population. So, I mean, we have to think that, uh, that most of these are 85% are migrant um, uh, labor, as we can think about as, as a not, uh, um, we could say not privileged uh, part of the population who live in, let's say, in very poor conditions. Um, the, the, the spaces that we could think uh, of us enjoying within the, within the house or within our domestic spaces uh, in many of these cases there's a lack of these of these uh, of these spaces 
just simply the typology of a living space or a dining space. Um, in many of these labor spaces um, where they live, they live and they cook in the same place and they, and they sleep. So we think about eight or 10 people living in the same room. So there's a lot of these gatherings, social uh, elements that, that suddenly happen in the, in the public space as a natural way of, of uh, let's say, of uh, reappropriating the space. Uh, I really like to go back to one of my, let's say, my source of inspiration that has been Hugo La Pietra and his work of really uh, um, uh, intellectually to blur this condition between interior and exterior. I mean, I think he, he makes a very good uh, job in that sense because he doesn't rely on architecture. And going back to this question of gender, I think that uh, I think the modern movement and the modern architecture in the 20th century uh, has been this uh, alpha male who has been, uh, from the point of view of the discipline, and has been deciding what is interior. It's inside us, okay, the architecture, and whatever is outside is landscape, okay? Or if there's a blur condition, like me, Van der Rohe likes to say, it, it's me, it's the architecture who decides it. So when I started to really think about interior or interior design, but without linking it to uh, architecture, um, I think we begin to liberate that concept. When we think about uh, interiority, or we think about domesticity, uh, then we think, I think, uh, that's my theory. I'm still struggling to, to put it down into words. So I really, I really have to thank you for this conversation because it really helps <laughs> me out to really clarify a lot of my thoughts. When we think about these two terms, of it, instead of interior design, or we think about domesticity or, or interiority, we begin to understand that domesticity, if we go back to etymology of, of the root, of something that you are taming or you are domesticating, um, it can happen anywhere else. Uh, as I was saying, and I, I, I've been researching this, this kind of uh, uh, casual gatherings that happen. People just put a, a, a carpet on the floor, and they break bread, and they gather on a Friday morning. Uh, some migrant population, they put some stones in the pavement of a, of a parking lot, and they define uh, a rectangle that is a cricket pitch. And they play there, and they have been doing that illegally because this kind of practice is in some cases is illegal public space here is not public let's say it's a vacant space if we can say it but they have been doing that for 15 years in a row and the same group of people and with maybe different cousins are coming into the country so suddenly that blur condition begins to begins to change what has happened with uh, i'm going back to your question sorry that i was probably giving <laughs> no, a very no, no, long no. intro you, you can, you can. You can <laughs> it's, it's that uh, now that we have, uh, we're lacking that uh, the possibility of maybe enjoying that public space. Uh, uh, if we think about us, uh, and I'm not thinking about that specific uh, group of, of population here in the UAE, uh, we have really uh, intensified uh, how we overlap a lot of actions and, and activities into the into the the domestic space. So um, an, another author that I really uh, like to mention is uh, Richard Sennett, uh, because I think it, he, he establishes a very interesting uh, concept of understanding the sense of interiority even within the public realm. And there's a lot of his research that was done in the Middle East and uh, some of his writing, he based some of his writing research on work done in, in Cairo. And he, uh, he, he describes how actually we can find some sense of interiority within a public space like some streets or a very narrow street in a medina in a souk uh, as an extension of a retail space so again we we find in traditional um uh, architecture and traditional design by by non-pedigree designers that probably is what i like to to also to describe how these uh, elements happened uh, in and out. Uh, if we think about India and Charles Korea, he defines a lot of these, um, this continuum of, of the house from the street where you can have your garden and the pavement, uh, open doors so the air can flow into the house, shaded areas uh, as you enter the courtyard and then the tree. He talks about the, the, the tree as that uh, basic space where the guru or the teacher is, is gathering the, the students around him to, to teach. So uh, going back to the interior, I think because, because we, have, uh, we have been forced to, uh, to intensify and to overlap all these activities within the public realm, 
I think we have a new sense of of that uh, interiority, and I think it's it's it has been providing us uh, not just that blur condition of the interior versus the exterior, but also uh, it has flipped a lot of the conditions that uh, that we traditionally have understood as private versus public. And, and this is a good example. Now, now I'm in the my uh, bedroom or the main uh, bedroom in the in the house uh, that traditionally could be understood as the most pri the more private space in the house. And at this point, it becomes uh, a, a digital window into the world um, mm -hmm. and becomes a more the more public space that I, uh, that I can offer at this point. So, I think that. Uh, yeah, I think the question of interiority, it's, it's something that has been challenged and has been challenged in all of us at different levels uh, at this point, as, as I was... Uh... So this is very interesting because in a certain way, during the lockdown, it happened the reverse of what was before, because before uh, we have the, let's say, the, the global world entering in our houses. And now it seems that during the lockdown, the privacy came outside, went globally uh, through the, <laughs> the screen, through the, the vision of the interiors. And uh, I, I think you had also the experience to teach remotely to your students. How was your experience since they, they are girls mostly, how it worked? Yes, um, we've, we have some, uh, no, I don't want to say issues, but there's, there's a lack of, a curve of, of, of really relearning re how we teach. I, I was used to teach online uh, when I first came here. I was still teaching uh, at the um, University of Salamanca as part of a, of a master in interior design. So I thought, okay, it's the same, but maybe longer sessions on a daily basis, um, it's fine. Um, we found the first problem, and it probably is the first psychological component. Uh, we had students that were able to fly back home. We have to think that our university, we have around 90, 90 nationalities. Um, many of them live in the UAE, uh, but um, most of them, I would say half of them, they, their, their families were abroad. Some of them were, were not able to travel, so they had to stay in dorms here. So there, there was an, an important psychological component of um of uh, of being uh being tired uh and being really exhausted of uh, of doing everything in the same place so i think uh, again that has been a challenge for all of us um uh, as we were moving forward during the course um uh, first of all i mean there's th there were some complaints and some issues because i mean as you were saying uh somehow when we are teaching online or we are forcing students to 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 turn their cameras on we, we somehow we are entering into the privacy of their of their places i mean in my case i i i i decided to just trust my students if maybe they're sleeping they're sleeping uh, or if they're there they're there but i mean yeah the same thing would happen uh in in class uh but maybe with the less of a of a body language of uh, interaction but um it was it was a funny question. I think that shy students that probably uh, wouldn't talk or wouldn't discuss so much in class uh, because they were uh, in their own places and they were somehow enjoying the privacy of their own uh, place. They were more interactive uh, when we were we was coming to discussions. So I mean, it, it was uh, sometimes it was like talking to avoid. Uh, but I think, yes, we all have to really relearn the dynamics of what online teaching means. And, uh, and that has been probably one of the most challenging elements. Um, I mean, some, some uh, courses were uh, needed to have some exams. And at uh, and, and that time, yes, they, they were f forced by the university to turn on the cameras. And there was a lot of polemy on Twitter. Uh, because people were saying they're forcing us to really, they're invading our privacy. And that, that is an interesting question because it opens another another thing, another component probably about the digital um, component of our interiors that probably we haven't tackled. I think we have been very lucky uh, uh, during this lockdown because I think that the technology was in place. So more or less the... Uh, the bandwidth of the Wi-Fi works. We have equipment and cameras, even on our mobile phones. So I think uh, that 
let's say the infrastructure is there, but I think there's certain protocols that uh, really need to catch up. Uh, the other day we were discussing about this idea of a, of a digital window and how uh, actually the, the, these virtual backgrounds that some um, uh, uh, apps uh, offer like Zoom have become very popular. And it's not just a question of playing around with them. I think it's, it's also because they have become an architectural element digital architectural element of how we can provide or uh, maximize the privacy of whatever you see here on my back. Okay? You saw me this, probably this morning, I had some things hanging there that I've been moving around. <laughs> um, so it's, it's it, we're staging, it becomes a stage. And, and I think that some of these memes that you could find that so Amazon was really selling these uh, uh, backdrops with uh, uh, yeah. with a printout of books had become very popular. It's 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 no joke. I think it's uh, it's an interesting and probably in the future it will become an interesting uh, new way of really breaking this window and and really making it into something more interactive. We had a very interesting conversation among students, and I, I think um, some of my interior design students um, were really pushing before the lockdown for uh, not printing out so much, being more aware about um, questions of sustainability. And uh, we were discussing the, the possibilities in the future, but <laughs> I mean, we, we have been pushed into a, an, um, a paperless classroom. And I think it, it has really helped us to really rethink uh, what the future of our classroom or a design studio could be in the future, how we can really print less um, at the end of the day, I think the industry or being on site really requires um, uh, a big uh, sheet of paper with, uh, with the construction details. But I think how we can really be more innovative when, we, when it comes to really represent and communicate our ideas um, uh, in the coming future. And I think we we're going to be pushed to do that. I think most of the interaction that we have as, as designers and uh, as um, as instructors and students, we have had the challenge of, of how we transmit, how they transmit their ideas on a digital platform and how we give feedback. And I think that has been another important learning curve in the in, during these days. But I have a question. Um, don't you think that during this lockdown, uh, the time was a little bit stressed in order to be, let's say, available 24 hours as a Friday marathon. Because um, I felt many times that uh, the spaces where we live, okay, we modified some little stuff, but mostly the stress was related to time because uh, in a certain way it was lower, in a certain way there was a sort of continuous flux of messages, stimulations, meetings to do teaching uh, so i work it more and more than previously what do you think about what was your experience it, it, it's true i think uh i think the first uh, i think probably the, the first um institutions that begin to be more uh hustlers in that sense probably were like art institutions and and, and uh, museums i think ali sherry that is a lebanese artist call it um the black friday of the museums, <laughs> everything was a big giving away. Uh, so somehow there was a need to compensate. Uh, we're closing down, but we really need to offer uh, ourselves more or, or, or make ourselves more available. And I think that it's a, that is a problem, how we can find that balance back. Um, it's true um, because I was not in studio. I mean, I, I, I still received some of these emails um, maybe someone is on leave and it's uh, out of the office. So uh, I'll be back, blah, 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 blah. That I find it at this point with the, with the lockdown, I find them ridiculous. It's a, because I mean, we are all available. So it's what, what are we talking about? And I think that is a, that is a huge problem. How do we really um, establish that limit between the private and public, even within this question of time? I, I really like this question of, of time because I think it has been, uh, has been a problem. I, I have been be giving feedback 24 hours a day, seven seven days a week. Um, and I really feel that it was a way of compensating not having a, a direct contact with, with the students. And uh, that that is a problematic question that, that has not been solved. And uh, and I think if, if we somehow have a continuity uh, one way or the other, we really need to find um, a way of really um, uh, finding that time. I mean, 
even now in in at, at home i think there's many activities that really overlap and uh, my living room in the morning is a yoga shala from six to eight then i have some coaching sessions with um, uh, with a coach to do some um, gymnastics and have some do some exercise then we overlap it with the breakfast of my son then we have the online classes with him uh, so it, everything becomes very, very crazy, and it's uh, um, and we really need to find that somehow the protocols that really rearrange the the interior space uh, to to really find time uh, for ourselves without these uh, these uh, rush and this hustling um, uh, condition that we found ourselves. And I, I remember there was some I think it was a student of ours that was really. Uh, vindicating these um, the 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 right of of not being a hustler, so and and I found myself even with because I I was engaging any conversation any online activity, and I was putting these hashtags. Uh, we uh, we don't stop. We won't stop. And I think it's 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 I true, I stop I true. stopped doing that because I was a way of really saying uh, this thing won't stop us. Uh, but I think really need to find back the, the quality time of, uh, of, of, uh, of the privacy of our house. And I think it has to do exactly with what you were mentioning. Um, we are opening up um, the privacy of our, of our spaces and somehow we have become available. It has become like a 7-Eleven. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> this is the syndrome, it's true. And I, I agree with the, the right to be out. Uh, that yeah. is very hard because, as you said in your reaction, as, as soon as someone says, no, I'm out because of I, I need my time, yeah. the other people, they feel very unpolite that yeah. you're not accepted yeah. to be yeah. in the game. Yeah. And uh, there is another point that I want to ask you about it because I feel that when we have this liquidity that, uh, we are attending uh, uh, before uh, and after Bauman writing. Yeah. Uh, at the end, uh, we are losing the moment of synthesis. Also yeah. in the meetings, also in the, this continuous, uh, continuous uh, way of communicating, uh, I feel always that I'm lo losing something. I'm yeah. losing a moment to say, ah, okay, A, B, C, I have to do it, let's yeah. do it. What what is your experience about this liquidity? I mean, I, I agree with you, and I think again because because of this flipped condition of uh, in and out has happened. Um, I found myself finding that moment of for pondering when I go out to do the shopping. So mm -hmm. now the let's say the the all the hassle and overlapping activities of cooking. I mean, I think it has happened all over the place that. Um, dumbbells and exercise things have run out of in every place. Uh, at some point, there was this um, peak of people buying flour to make bread at home. Um, all this kind of craziness. I mean, I, I really found myself that now is when I take the car and I put on my mask and my gloves and I go to do the shopping for two hours in the morning, is the moment where I, I somehow I meditate. And when I, I find myself in this question of, of having this moment of quietness, and peace, and it's the other way around. That it will be probably that in, in the in the past, that would has been my socializing uh, element of, of being outside or meeting people or having a drink or whatever, instead of being the other way around. And uh, so I, I think because of this question, um, I think it's uh, it's going to be interesting how we really um, uh, challenge the public space in the future. And how we really are challenging the interior space uh, in the coming future, like like this double condition. It's interesting because uh, the, what you said about uh, the condition to take your mask and to go with your car as a moment for yourself to protect a sort of cocoon is the same answers that years ago one lady in Jordan gave me about burka. Because I say, how do you feel when you have your burka? I say, ah, this is the moment of freedom. When I'm with myself, I can, I can be not make it up, uh, and this was very shocking for me because I say, oh, it's interesting. It's another way of uh, the, she was talking about burka as a uh, as a dress to protect herself 
from the others and not this is was uh, <laughs> at the end we we are going to create a sort of shell to protect ourselves it's true and, and i think it, 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 that sense of, of interiority going back to to the to the word if, if we reduce it to the minimum i mean i think that questions like those like uh, a burqa or a full hijab um, they have been recognized as a, as a, as a minimum interior space uh, that someone could, uh, I wouldn't say enjoy, but I think that could be uh, really be part of, uh, of certain cultures. And, and it's true. And I think in one of the interviews of Richard Sennett, he actually talks about interviewing uh, uh, some women uh, that were uh, wearing full hijab and they were describing it as, as, as you were saying. So that's, that, that's true. And uh, yes. Uh, last question. Uh, yeah. I think you you live in the campus, isn't it? Yes. In the Sharjah. Okay. Uh, so in a certain way, you live already in a sort of, let's say, gated community. Yeah. And uh, what's happened during the lockdown? Uh, did uh, Is there any change in the relationship with the neighborhood, with the other people? How did you, f did you felt some changes? Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the legislation that uh, the UAE has had has been quite strict in terms of uh, curfews um, during um, a few months. It has been a little bit more relaxed um, over here on campus. So I think uh, it, I think uh, the, the authorities really trust us as a community. So as long as we were having certain social distancing, uh, there having been that so many um, issues. I mean, we have we have had no cases of uh, of coronavirus on campus. I mean, we have had the the precautions of that swimming pools are closed, so gyms are closed. We're expecting them to reopen soon. Uh, but I think uh, besides that, uh, I think in general we all have kept probably the same social distancing that we would be having in in any other city or any other place. And uh, and yes, and the, the the mobility was really reduced to to get a permit and maybe go do the shopping and coming back. Um, so it has been quite relaxed in that sense. We have to think that we, uh, we live in a country where most of the population are not elder people uh, because of these migrant uh, and constant flux of people. I mean, as long as you even if you retire, most of the people probably don't reach that that age of retirement here. Uh, you go back home. So I, I think there's there's a bracket of uh, of the population in terms of age that actually are not here. So I think all the risks that uh, many people could have have in terms of of uh, of age and possible complications with terms of health that has not been a, a big issue in that sense. I mean, but there's there has been many many cases of uh, uh, of infections all over the place, but the mortality has been quite low. And I think it's among the three or four uh, lower mortalities uh, uh, in the worldwide. And I think, uh, yeah. And then the last question, do you think it's also a matter of density of population or only because of uh, the young, uh, the youth of the people living in the country? I think we, we have to think that uh, one first uh, question will be the, the age. Uh, the density, I, I would doubt it. I mean, as I was telling you, there, there, there are some uh, uh, neighborhoods uh, where mainly, mainly workers live where the density is huge. And there were some cases like, uh, I think it was Karama or in Burdubai, yeah. where there was some, even some uh, curfew within the curfew. So there had okay. been some periods of 48 hours where... Uh, Entire blocks uh, were tested, where entire blocks were on a quarantine for 14 days in a row. So there has been really um, massive, like I would say, um, uh, uh, actions of acupuncture of how to really uh, control uh, the population and the COVID in okay. that sense. Okay. So our time is expired. Uh... Juan, thank you very much for your participation to the marathon and uh, see you soon. <laughs> and goodbye. I'm going to give the room to my colleague Alessandro. Bye. Bye, Juan. Ciao. Thank you very much. Ciao. 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 Ciao.